Soviets and Soviets of the Red Army, how y'all doing? This is Con Ulrich. Hi, I'm Rangaroo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, today on Splitsk Vest, we have ourselves an old friend and someone flying rather high. Rang, who do we have? Left hand side in blue, we have Great Eagle playing as the 5th Panzer Division. Oh boy, that is something I haven't seen in a while. Mm -hmm. Flatline, Crip and Depression, Group Viborg, uh, Vanguard Income. Quick call out uh, SU76P back there. Yep. The hideous mother effing thing, probably in the entire theater, and that includes the KP tank. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that really crappy artillery uh, tank and rotor tanks that no one likes using, but you're already sure it. I confess, I actually never played rotor tanks. I was a War Thunder guy, or not at all. Oh, well, you're not missing out too much. Oh, good. Right. <laughs> uh, openings. What what can we see about the openings here, big guy? Uh, we got a mortar half track right off the bat from Right Eagle, which is. Perfect play, especially on a town map like this where the town is so narrow. That mortar half track is going to go a long way, especially if it's you know three kilometer mortar range. You're actually dropping smoke first. It's an interesting call. Actually, I'm kind of surprised to see the share notes over here. It's opening from crippling. Um, mm -hmm. With Vibor, we didn't quite see that last time. I don't think. Uh, you correctly pointed out to me we saw these guys last week with crippling depression, and when we're back for another bout, I kind of thought we weren't going to see them again. Yeah, I, I really do like seeing Vyborg being played. They're probably my favorite like of the Russian divisions that I was added in DLC. Mm -hmm. They're very, you know, mismatched, but they got really awesome infantry and very different infantry compared to the other standard Soviet divisions. You've got the mountain troops and naval troops, unlike just regular riflemen. That is certainly true. Now, I was actually just taking a look over here. We're pack 40, that 75 mil is trying to engage. All of that Soviet armor, KV-1, IS-2, Comprati, BA-10 for recon. Holy like, that's crap. That's a scary group of, of material right there. That is. I mean, that is a really scary investment to have so much armor. But I like it because Crippling Depression is doing that one strategy I say everyone should do on this map. And that is just a push for your center because it's completely open. And if you have tank advantage, like two IS-2s, you can fairly easily just you know, roach across and get all of his free real estate. Well, and, and having that recon right there, too, is just so delicious. It's mm -hmm. it's one of those things that takes all the issues of a tank and just gets rid of them completely. Yep, yo, he is going to run into a pack 40. <laughs> yo, hey, at least, you know, he, he spots the pack 40, technically. Did his job. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. It, it was a moral victory. Mm hmm Recon by explosion, I think I call it. <laughs> the old Daffy Dark cartoon, he can only do it once. Yep. <laughs> uh, we are seeing more of uh, this infantry being brought out in, more Chernos, uh kind of going to the north again. Those guys, those Tartan troops, air assaults, but better. Um, another anti air piece going to the center, and actually, I'm surprised to see so many Chernos. I really thought we were going to see more Strelke, but um, not to yeah. be the case. I guess we have much more for that value opening here. Yeah, I mean, we, we do. We do... Trash talkers had to open into a lot. Churner openings aren't as bad because they sure. they do have a machine gun at least. And like a ten man squad compared to nine. Truth. Yeah. Uh actually, ooh, we have a napalm plane coming on in. We have a four ten and a gun run. That's a dumb idea, my friend. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh but yes, this napalm plane going on in, I think might see the death of this pack thirty six and maybe the MG forty two. Did he? Wait, I don't no. think he dropped any bombs. Hefe, um, you're, you're missing your gun run here. I mean, he's got a recon plane up top. I'm actually really surprised you didn't see anything there. I think he maybe targeted Pack 40, and then Pack 40 died, and now there's nothing for him. Like, he lost Ooh. target. Oh no, he's got a beautiful thing right there with the air such troop and coming on in. We have to get three squads. Oh my gosh, this is going to be really, really yeah. beautiful. This is like that one scene like every, every book was like, the heroes have reinforcements coming in, and the bad guys, it's like, <laughs> they just nuke it from orbit. Here we go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Yeah. It, it's always interesting to me that we don't see more of napalm planes. I mean, I, I guess they're a little bit less bang for your buck. It's a much more sustained issue. Yeah, they've been buffed in recent patches, so they are a little bit more worthwhile, but... They're usually not common to begin with for the Eastern Front divisions. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just think people feel more comfortable. I mean, I am with, uh, you know, just bombs that go kaboom, not bombs that go kaboom and then shh of the fire and smoke. 
Well, you know, it's, it's more of a German thing anyway to go for the whole Sturm und Drang kind of approach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As opposed to the Sturm und Drang approach. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know how that joke has never been made in 200 casts, but... Uh, uh, in the meantime, though, we have an IS-2 with this Pac-4, excuse me, wow, P-4 in a Pac-40, trying to keep the Soviets at bay. I don't think this is going to last any longer than the time it takes for the IS-2s to start shelling yeah. that tank. I think at SU-76 here is going to be the whole, the whole key to the operation. He's just going to go up that hill and everything's going to die. I mean, it's got two machine guns. I mean, two. A slight better than one. <laughs> Statistically speaking, and it yeah. even has like a 76 millimeter cannon. <laughs> it can go from zero to 35 kilometers an hour yeah. in 10.6 seconds. <laughs> and uh, he even likes the yeah. color. Uh, I, I do love that little thing. Here. It's just so it's so stupid. It's uh, imagine actually be driving that thing around in 1944, and everyone else has got like T-34s and IS-2 and KV tanks and. You want you want a crappy T twenty six with an open top turret. Yes, and not even a really effective gun either. No, no, it's just a bloody infantry sport gun. Can we please talk about the fact that there's three uh, flak tw uh, Ooh, twenty mils over here? I do like that. It's actually doing a pretty good job of warding off the yeah. IL twos. Yeah, unfortunately for him though, I mean the IS two Camarotti. Yeah, he's only got nine shells left, but it's been more than enough to take care of any kind of issue in front of him. Yep, and he has machine guns as well to deal with his infantry, but they. Like, I'm I'm so happy that this puss is working, because it's a vindication. It's, it vindicates me complaining every single match because everyone always pushes a town or northern choke point. But if you just got like the heavy armor, just just do this. You, I mean, he's got the hill. He can now put pressure on the town down south. He can shoot up the like supply line up north. It's, it's like king of the hill right here. I completely agree. And the unfortunate thing is that we have this ME-410 who keeps making these runs, but what are you going to do with a 30 mil cannon against, you know, what, 120 millimeters of armor? It's obscene. Yeah, he's, he's having a little bit of a hard time, man. Too bad he doesn't have any... I don't think Faith has cluster bombs to begin with. I don't think because so Because clusters would be a much more effective way of dealing with those IS-2s. Actually, a really good way to not deal with the IS-2s is just to just kind of not go after them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hurricane is on here, but um, I'm not really sure we're going to rock him like a Hurricane. I think he's just going to be sent away packing. Yep. And indeed, yep. Uh, Anti-tank guns in the in the town as well get taken on out. And now, yep, here comes the anti-air nets being taken out piece by piece. And the SU-76P is almost even going to get some shots off. This is really strange. I'm actually really surprised he's still alive. I think he's surprised too. He's like, wait, I get to shoot? <laughs> <laughs> I've made it this far. But mom never lets me play in the house. <laughs> Unfortunately, to the north, we have that one KV-1S uh, gets taken oh. on out by those two P4s. And in indeed, we might see another one get taken out just shy of that hillside. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the flak, the anti-air net's getting taken out. We have a couple Panthers here, and even if the IS-2s go down, that opens it up for all of that air power. Yes, the IS-2s still have a decent amount of AP cells, considering, uh, you know, starting armor pen recent shell loadout, so I want to say the Panthers have a chance, but as we can see, one of them just got killed and now it's a one-on-two, which is not good odds. Yeah, I do I do like the smoke, smoke in the hill. Trying to block line aside. You know, at long last, actually, we have these um, Stemaviki and Astroki squad down south who are holding this flag forever in a day, and just when you think that they're going to get taken on out, they got these P-grounds on the run. Mm-hmm. As all the Sharnos are running into the forest and probably going to get forced into a quick surrender here pretty quickly. But uh, for the moment, holding strong. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Right Eagle's just going to be bringing out more of those heavier tanks. The Panthers are just kind of conga lining. I mean, eventually the IS-2s are going to run out of AP cells and then the Panther does have a chance. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you want to be the one to write that, that letter back home? Yes. I mean, it's definitely a costly affair to throw Panthers into enemy tanks until the enemy tanks run out of ammo. You want to use, like, Panzer twos or something for that. You know, there's a BA-10 that just went down here, and I was half expecting him to start killing this P-4s to the north. Mm -hmm. um, but indeed, we have three more tanks. I mean, and, and this this is unfortunately the case. Yeah. Fifth, Fifth Panzer has some really, really lovely vehicles, but just... 
this poor infantry is getting stuck in front of them. Yes, and also long range, the IS-2 is kind of better than in the Panther. The, the extra armor definitely goes quite a mile. This, of course, to slower reload speed into it, but in long range, it's not as big of a deal. It's about being able to survive shots. Very, very true. Um, humorously, in the meantime, the Shrubovikis and Strokis down to the south, they have killed their, their German tormentors, but still, the front line is passing them by. Bird Panther dies in the same location. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's... it's no, they're all dead on the road, like, in a perfect line, a fourth one's coming up. No. Fourth time's a charm. <laughs> Be careful, because this is the wide part of the road. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Panther G, so it does have APCR, so maybe maybe has a chance. That's true. That's true. But you know what? Even a G is going to be, you know, he's going to find it hard going after those those uh, Combrati bros right there. Mm -hmm. And here here's the proof in the pudding. There we go. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> this is not going to happen. It's oh, just, uh, fifth run. We got number five here. Number five, I'm I'm really rooting for him. Mr. Mr. Fritzkman. Fritzkman? Really? Oh, uh, that's his name. Oh, Frischman. Yeah, okay. Frischman. Yeah. Maybe he'll take another approach. Look, he's, he's taking another approach now. <laughs> it just goes to show the real veterans get to drive the G. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, northern side, not looking all that good now. Really good, just combined arms per se or crippling. Well, I'd like to in the meantime, actually, we have this uh, IL-2 napalm run right in the center of town. Ooh. And that's going to drive all the infantry out, if nothing else. Ooh. Uh, okay, I thought it was a little bit more than that, but I guess not. Yeah, it's pretty, like, lackluster area of effect. It's, like, in, like, 100 meters or so. And the last real threat dies in the north. And with that, the entire northern flank is open. Mm -hmm. The ME410 is not going to get all that work done that it needs to get. Yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like crippling depression has brought our soaring friend back down to the earth. Yeah. And that Panther G goes go goes down in the meantime too. Geez, those IS2s have been champions. They have no more AP shells. Actually, the one of the lead has no more AP shells. One of the backs got four, but um Yeah. Good freaking luck being a German player at this particular moment. Yeah, yeah. Just that was really good positioning with those IS2s. Just pushing along the center, getting the hill, and uh, pretty much just run crippling the match. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm I'm, I'm so vindicated, Khan. This, this has made my day. Thank you, Crippling, I... for doing this strategy. <laughs> well, you know, again, um, I'm happy I can be here with you, and I'd, I'd like to thank the Academy. Um, mm -hmm. Really putting up some hard work, those guys just working hard. Panthers telling us what not to do when really? engaging in IS-2. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're in phase B right now, and I have absolutely no idea how the heck White Eagle's gonna combat this. I... I don't feel like he'll be able to. It's just too much on the field at this point. Maybe if he invested in some heavier armor earlier, to try and deal with those IS-2s before they got onto the hill. But, I mean, he... He did have a chance to kill them with the Panthers, he just didn't deploy them right. He kind of sent them in one at the time. Maybe if he just had like like two or three on standby mm -hmm. and then move them all together mm -hmm. through volume of fire, you can, you know, maybe kill said IS-2s at long range. Oh, do you want to point out a couple things real quick? That one, come IS-2, Comrati, yeah, four Panther kills, a couple uh, packs and a flak right there. The other IS-2... Nothing inconsiderable either. Three tanks, anti-tank, you know, that kind of material. Losses, unfortunately, there's one P4 that was amazing. Janovic over here. Ooh. But Janovic um, cannot kill everything on his own. Oh, no, he cannot. But, yeah, just good good play. Good play uh, from Crippling Depression. Can we also just point one minor thing out, not to linger too much longer on this entire match? Um, can we take a look at Crippling Depression's picture, his profile pic? He seems like he's suffering. 
Yeah, you know, he's only smiling on the outside. His uh, his beauty is only skin deep. So, <laughs> but folks, um, hopefully we're going to leave you on that hopefully much higher note and see you guys all in a couple of days, which means until next time, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.